uh, of the 18 International Docomomo Conference and Students Workshop uh, Santiago uh, 2024. Um, we are very glad to have today uh, Sonia Fuentes from Guatemala and Carlos Eduardo Diaz Comas from Brazil. Sonia is architect, uh, PhD, and uh, she is professor at the university, uh, National University in, in Guatemala. Uh, she gonna, she's gonna talk about a very interesting case and, and a very, um, what can I say, a very wonderful uh, um, operation of, of modern architecture in, in, this, in the city of Guatemala, not actually in the center of the city. That is because we, we uh, entitle uh, the hurt and the, and the age of the of the city and Carlos Eduardo Diaz Comas, he's uh, emerit professor from the uh, Universidad Federal uh, de Rio Grande do Sul, and uh, his PhD also, and former uh, coordinator of Tocomomo Brazil also. He is going to talk about the um, the edge uh, or the border of the city, uh, actually the, the border of, of Brasilia and in relation with uh, another square, this, the three power squares in Brasilia and the Tiananmen Square in Beijing. Uh, thank you so much for being here. And Sonia, go ahead when, when you want, please. Good morning, okay. folks. Good morning to the, to the people attending this pre-event. Okay, thank you, Horacio, and good morning to everyone in Latin America and good afternoon in Europe. I guess uh, it's already, the day is finishing in the other side of the world. I want to take the opportunity to thank the Comomo Chile and especially Horacio Torrent for the invitation to participate in these pre-events to stimulate active participation for the upcoming the Comomo conference to be held next year in Chile. I'm also very pleased to share this session with Carlos Eduardo Comas. Very nice to see you again. And today I'm going to share with you how modernity was consolidated in Guatemala, Guatemala City through the Civic Center. This presentation was divided into four parts for a better understanding of the evolution of modern architecture in Guatemala. The first part is about knowing the origins of modernity. The second part is about the architects and their training. The third part is about cultural transfer that occurs on the American continent, especially in architecture. And the fourth part, the legacy of architectures and the murals of the Civic Center will be addressed. When analyzing the, present, when, when analyzing the chronology of the modern movement in Europe, it can be concluded that the modern movement was fueled by the steel, the Bauhaus, and had its diffusion in the international congresses of modern architecture of which in the specific case of the Civic Center of Guatemala, the largest influences were established in the fourth Congress where the first urban planning charter known as the Athens Charter was worked on, in which the zoning of the city centers were promoted. And the eighth Congress, the heart of the city, where the criteria for construction for new community centers were established. In the following image, you can see the evolution of modern architecture from functionalism at the beginning of the 20th century, showing the different aspects that were addressed by the movement. Bauhaus architecture of dictatorships, international style organic architecture, brutalist architecture, until reaching public integration architecture with focuses mainly on the design of urban complexes established in Latin America. But what happened after William Morris and how did the evolution of modern architecture occur in the world and its cultural transfer to the American continent? The following image show us how the training of architects played a leading role in how architecture was done in those times. Most of them coincidentally studied in the same schools of architecture and therefore their ideas also coincide. Walter Gropius, Hannes Meyer, Mies van der Rohe, Siegfried Gideon, Le Corbusier, Frank Lloyd Wright, joined at different universities in the United States and Mexico, where the authors of the Our Civic Center also studied. What was happening in Guatemala at the beginning of the 20th century? 
Several events happened that, that directly and indirectly helped the modernization of the city. In 1917 and 1918, there were a series of earthquakes that unfortunately left the city partially destroyed. These events helped a lot to rethink the reconstruction of the city, especially in its construction systems, which had to be renewed and updated. Architects began to experiment with new materials, iron, concrete, reinforced concrete systems that would allow them to begin to modify not only the construction systems of Guatemala, but also the morphology of the city since buildings began to be built of more than two floors. And with this, the image of the city began to change. Jorge Ubico, dictator of Guatemala from 1933 to 1944, Years in which, among other things, he dressed up the center of historic center with neo-colonial architecture, together with architect Rafael Perez de Leon, who became the architect of the dictatorship. Buildings were erected, such as the Police Palace in 1935, the National Palace in 1937, and the Post Office Palace in 1938. This type of architecture marked the persistence of the colonial style in the new Guatemala of Asunción. Being the architect Perez de Leon, rationalist in his architectural conceptions, he is forced by the whims of the dictatorship to work neo-colonial architecture. However, and despite this, architect Perez de Leon manages to make some works in the art deco and rationalist line. The public health building and the central library, as you can see on the screen, both buildings are beginning to be examples of those new languages so typical of modern cities. And although, they were built isolated from one another in the center of the city. Some modern buildings such as the Prado, Elma and Herrera buildings do not fully permeate the city. It is not until the fall of the President Subico dictatorship and the revolution of 1944 that architecture in Guatemala really began to change. One of the triggers of the modern movement in Guatemala is the construction of the Olympic city. The project began to be built in 1946 when Guatemala won the venue to organize the six Central American and Caribbean games, a project that is located near the future civic center of the city. At the same time, at the Latin American level, new urban complexes of modernity began to emerge that not only stimulated the decentralization of all city centers, promoted the recovery of the prominence of pedestrians in urban centers, but also integrated plastic arts into their buildings to restore identity to an architecture that it had practically spread throughout the world. This is how urban complexes such as Brasilia by Lucio Costa and Oscar Niemeyer emerged. Ciudad Universitaria de Caracas by Carlos Raúl Villanueva, Ciudad Universitaria UNAM in Mexico by Mario Pani and Enrique del Moral, Ciudad Universitaria in Guatemala, University of San Carlos by Roberto Aicinena, Jorge Montes, Carlos Goisler, and Raúl Minondo, which were the same architects that worked on the Civic Center. And finally, the Civic Center that was built between 1954 and 1976 by Roberto Aicinena, Jorge Montes, Carlos Goisler, Pelayo Yarena, and Raúl Minondo. And with this project, modernity was consolidated in Guatemala. There were several circumstances that influenced the constitution of the Civic Center. The author architects studied in United States and Mexico universities. The artists also lived experiences abroad for their training. They were able to incorporate in key offices. For the first time, multidisciplinary intervention occurred in Guatemala. And the Civic Center also presents characteristics taken from the international congresses at modern, of modern architecture. The architects Jorge Montes, Carlos Hoisler, Roberto Isinena, Raúl Minondo, and Pelayo Yarena returned to Guatemala after completing their architecture studies abroad. Coincidentally, they arrived in the country at the time when efforts were beginning to be made to build a new center, the Civic Center. Most of them managed to join in governmental offices. And they also accomplished to form a multidisciplinary team with artists with uh, Carlos Merida, Roberto González Goyri, Efraín Recinos, Dagoberto Vázquez, and Guillermo Grajeda Menas. For the execution of the Civic Center in Guatemala, several criteria were taken into account, which can be divided in three large areas. The urban, which was based on the fourth and the eighth congresses of modern architecture, 
the architectural one, which was influenced by the application of the Le Corbusier's five points and the artistic, which also adheres to the criteria of the ATM where the application of the arts to architecture is promoted. And the training of the artists also had a lot, a lot of influence who, like the architects, were also trained abroad and had contact with great artists who greatly influenced them, especially Carlos Merida, who finally led the group of artists who collaborated in the design of the Civic Center. The Italian influence towards our Civic Center, especially in the applications of plastic arts, is undeniable, and it could be said that it had three types of influence. The first one was experimental training by artist Carlos Merida, who upon making several trips to Europe had the opportunity to attend Amadeo Modigliani's workshop where he had contact with Picasso through Jaime Sabartes. In the second, the second was artist Carlos Merida's learning the application of Venetian mosaic technique that he learned during the years when he was cultural attaché of Guatemala in Rome, with which technique he worked on the murals of the Municipal Palace and the Guatemalan Institute of Social Security. And the third one was learning the technique of glazed enamel on copper plates, learned together with Pesaro Laboratories and artist Franco Bucci and his representative in Guatemala, Pierino Pinzani, with, ho with whose technique he worked on the murals in the interiors of the buildings of the National Mortgage Credit and the Bank of Guatemala. The Civic Center of Guatemala responds to the criteria suggested by the 8th CM and it was built in three phases. The first phase consists of four buildings, the Municipal Palace, the Guatemalan Social Security Institute, the National Mortgage Credit, and the Bank of Guatemala. It was only in this phase where plastic integration architecture was made, and also in the second phase in which the Miguel Angel Asturias Cultural Center was built. The plastic applications manifested in the murals of the Civic Center carry with them the goal of generating an architecture with identity, a Guatemalan architecture that architecture that truly rescues and reinterprets the values of pre-Spanish architecture so identifying of Guatemalans. The one that has our origins, miscegenation and conquest, and not only at the level of their themes expressed in its murals, but also the design of the open spaces of the complex in which those pre-Hispanic ceremonial centers are clearly evoked. Following the urban concepts suggested by the heart of the city document, the Civic Center in its complex adopted the zoning indicated in the Athens Charter, the separation between pedestrians and vehicles indicated by the heart of the city, the integration of open spaces and landscape elements, the different heights in the buildings that compose it, and at the level of architectural composition, Le Corbusier's five points applied in extraordinary way in the Ville Savoie. The use of pilotis, the free floor plan, the liberation of the facade through the curtain wall, the horizontal window and the roof garden. So we can see all the applications of these five points in the following buildings of the first phase where the, in the municipal palace, you can see um, the free floor plan. You can also see the pilotis, the horizontal window, and the free floor plan also. In the social security building as well, you can find the horizontal window, the use of pilotis, the free facade. In the national mortgage credit building, we can find, this is particular, um, awesome, because in this building, I think it's the only one where the five points were applied. You can see the use of pilotis, the free facade, the horizontal window, the roof garden. This is the, the one of the two buildings that actually applied the roof garden, the horizontal window, and the free floor plan. And last but not least, the Bank of Guatemala building, in which we can find the application of the free facade, the use of pilotis, the horizontal window, and the free floor plan. 
In the Municipal Palace building of the West Facade, Guillermo Garajeda Mina worked on the mural of the conquest, where you can see a figurative composition showing how these forces existed between conquerors, religious people, and indigenous people. In the in situ casting technique, which has become one of the greatest contributions to plastic integration architecture in our country. On the Eastern facade of the, of the municipal palace, Dagoberto Vasquez always worked in, in the in situ casting technique, the Canto a Guatemala mural inspired by Rusticatio Mexicana representing Guatemalan elements, its nature, history, and culture. In the interior lobby of the municipal palace, Carlos Merida works on the Venetian mosaic mural of Canto a la Raza in an abstract composition, but in which you can see the protagonist of miscegenation, the Spanish and the indigenous in the conquest. This mural was recently restored by architect Rodrigo Alvarez and was delivered in 2022 to the municipal authorities. In the building of the Guatemalan Institute of Social Security, Carlos Merida always worked in Venetian mosaic technique represents the mural La Seguridad Social or the Social Security, where you can see the figure of the employer protecting his employees in a gesture of a hall. This mural is located on, on a water mural that expands its expression. On the outside of the Guatemalan Institute of Social Security, artist Roberto Gonzalez Goyri works on the mural in casting situ technique, the Guatemalan nationality where he narrates the conquest and the shock that is generated from the action and then the evangelization. Moving on to the National Mortgage Credit Building, West Facade, work by Efraín Resinos using the cast in situ technique it captures in an abstract composition called Agriculture, Industry, Balance, and Exchange, the main activities carried out in banking. On the Eastern Facade, Roberto González Goyri worked on another mural called Culture and Economy using the cast in situ technique Unlike artist Resinos, he is inspired by the main functions of banking, but in a more figurative expression. In the main lobby at the entrance of this building, Carlos Merida worked in glazed enamel technique on copper plates and white marble, the mural muralist intentions on a Mayan theme. Merida pays tribute to our roots with the composition of the Mayan dancing priests located in the lobby of the Bank of Guatemala. In the Bank of Guatemala also, in its west facade, Roberto Gonzalez Gori worked on the mural reminiscences on a Mayan theme using the cast in situ technique in an abstract composition that evokes the Mayan style of Tikal. On the eastern facade of the Bank of Guatemala, Dagoberto Vasquez worked on a figurative mural that unfortunately cannot be seen in the incompleteness of the civic center because one of the streets wasn't finished, so the one, the, this mural is practically obstructed. Artist Vasquez worked on the culture and economy mural and deals with the functions of banking. To finish with the murals of the Bank of Guatemala, Arturo Perez Rodesno worked in a glazed enamel on copper plates, the mural, the economic integration of Central America as a result of a contest promoted by Central Bank of Honduras. He was the winner and is located in the session room of the monetary board on the 12th floor. After having gone through the plastic applications elaborated in the four buildings of the first phase of the Civic Center, we can link virtually all the murals in the lobbies to generate, in words of artist Luis Diaz, the Gucumats route. In a second phase of the Civic Center, and almost parallel to the first, the Miguel Angel Asturias Cultural Center was built, where Efraín Resinos achieved his magnificent work, managing to perfectly fuse especially aesthetics, architecture, and construction in a timeless architecture. Every corner of this building is a piece of art inspired in Guatemala, its landscapes, and the great Jaguar. The Miguel Angel Asturias Cultural Center is an iconic building of our country. In recent years, there has been a concern to complete this complex with projects that Efraín Resinos planned the Marimba Institute that's already done and the Institute of Performing Arts is on the way. In the third phase of the Civic Center, the architectural expressions changed from a rational and regional architecture to a more international one. The plastic applications disappeared or were not executed despite having been planned. 
in response to changes in government and policies that do not promote state construction and a difference of almost 20 years between the execution of the first phase with this one. So yeah, now getting to the conclusions, um, I can make the following remarks. The Civic Center City of Guatemala is a representative of the cultural syncretism reflected in the architecture between the pre-Hispanic Mayan tradition and modernity. The murals of the Civic Center of Guatemala City are an exceptional example that integrate architecture, urbanism, and the plastic arts with a movement that reflects an architectural complex of historical, social, cultural, political, and economic values of different transcendental historical moments for Guatemala society. The intentions of the architects and artists are a clear example of innovation at both a formal, constructive, and functional level for the time and the cultural transfer of which they were part of. The artists managed to consolidate their work in the civic center complex since, in it, they captured the largest mural work in Guatemala and Central America. There is no civic center in any country in Central America that meets the characteristics of ours. More than 50 years after its execution, it is very important to review and evaluate the construction systems and materials used in the civic center buildings, as well as its mural, murals be, which needed conservation interventions already. And finally, the civic center of Guatemala constitutes the paradigmatic example in the internationalization of the modern movement in Latin America through ambivalent contributions regarding its architectural and urban dimension. Because while the buildings that form it achieved architecturally a high level of functional efficiency and adequate technological proposal, the plastic incorporation of pre-Hispanic heritage and the morphological proposal appropriate to the aesthetic modernity that Guatemala demanded at the urban level, on the contrary, integration with public spaces was not achieved, nor the continuity of the pre-existing layout, nor cultural appropriation by citizens. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much, Sonia. Uh, um, if we have uh, any question, uh, direct question, we can do it now. If we have a conversation or, or comments, we can do it at the end of the of the presentation. So we can start with uh, Carlos. Yes. We are not. We are seeing your your yeah. your computer. Oh, not the not the uh, yeah. presentation. Okay. Yeah. Oh, there. Okay. Mm. No, we are not seeing the the presentation we are seeing the the whole part yeah. well it was all ready and then sorry your answer hmm? Sorry, I don't That's know okay. what I can. We can we can wait for you. Don't worry. Share screen. Okay. Share screen. Yeah, okay now.
Ah. Oh. Okay. Uh, thank you, Docomoma International and uh, Horacio Torrent for this invitation. I'm going straight to the point. Uh, I start from the um, fact that we often feel to notice contemporariness, the contemporariness of past events in different uh, and distant places and uh, overlook at parallelisms in the 20th century include the design and building of key public spaces in Brazil and China. The Plaza of the Three Powers in Brasilia was inaugurated as the city itself uh, in 1960, after three years in the making, preceded by studies undertaken from 1946 to 1955. Although the idea of a new capital in the hinterland dated back from colonial days, it was President Juscelino Kubitschek who materialized it in his term. The city was inaugurated on April 21, exactly 168 years after the uh, execution of Tiradentes, the hero that first dreamed of the independence of Brazil from Portugal. The remodeled Tiananmen Square in Beijing was inaugurated on October 1, 1959, 10 years after Chairman Mao Zedong announced the founding of the People's Republic of China. Mao spoke from the rostrum used to announce imperial edicts at the Tiananmen Tower between the Imperial City and the Imperial Tiananmen Square, built by the Ming Dynasty in 14. 17 and rebuilt by the Qing in 1651. Both the plaza in Brasilia and the square in Beijing were conceived as places of political action and memory, capable of handling huge crowds, stages for the citizenry that would double as prime destinations for civic tourism. And their comparison is not unwarranted, at least from the Brazilian point of view. The plaza in Brasilia is the head of the city, like uh, the heart at the edge, huh? uh, as the palace in Shang'an in north central China, uh, the former, formerly the capital of the Han, Sui, and Tang dynasties close to the present day Xi'an. Lucio wrote that the uh, millenarian art of the Chinese embankments inspired the monumental sector of his winning entry uh, in the Brasilia pilot plan design competition of 1956-57. So I have some grounds, you know, to uh, proceed. So we're talking about 27 years between 55 when uh, Kubitschek announces the, um, the, uh, that uh, the construction of Brasilia would be one of his uh, government goals to 1985, which is the latest uh, uh, intervention in the space. So we're talking about 30 years of a process. Okay? Uh, designed by Oscar, uh, by Costa and Oscar Niemeyer, the plaza was the apex uh, of uh, Brasilia's monumental sector. Like the city it headed and edged, the plaza should signal and celebrate the capitalist development of the country through the transformation of the Brazilian central plateau landscape. Costa conceived an artificial geography that both symbolized the country's march to the West begun during the Vargas era from 1930 to 1945 and ratified the country's embrace of the automobile industry, road transportation and air travel. The cross-shaped pilot plan involved a large scale cut and large scale mechanized cut and fill operation. Earth dug from the bow-shaped highway and residential axis was used to shape the straight monumental axis comprising the esplanade of the ministries, which you see here, here you have the highway axis 
and the plaza of the three powers. The plaza, the planet is rectangular in plan. The plaza started as an equilateral triangle to convey the equivalence of the three branches of government, but soon became an isosceles trapezoid in order, in order to accommodate the National Congress along the smaller side, the side which bordered the esplanade. The Supreme Federal Court and the uh, presidential workplace, the Planalto Palace, Planalto means plateau in Portuguese, uh, they faced each other 268 meters apart on a paved surface of uh, was 120 meters wide. Close uh, the uh, Supreme Court, close to the south side, uh, south vertex uh, of the plaza and the Plan Alto to the northern side. Um, the, this plaza, and this is quite important, the plaza rises one meter high above the uh, original ground level, the savanna, like a, a cruiser riding the waves. Uh, it is at the same time, uh, uh, it, it, its eastern edge resembles both stern and quay historical precedents include squares with buildings on three sides, like Praça 15 de Novembro in Rio, or uh, Praça do Comércio in Lisbon. Open to Guanabara Bay, Praça 15 was uh, associated with the Brazilian Empire, open uh, to Guanabara Bay. And uh, while the uh, Praça do Comércio, open to the Tagos River, recall that motherland Portugal was a monarchy. Modern precedents include Costas Plazas for the University uh, of Brazil, the 1930s plan of Agash, of Alfred Agash for the remodeling of Rio. And uh, here you have the Praça do Comércio in Lisbon and the original sketch of uh, 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 Costa for the uh, design competition. The Congress featured two, uh, two uh, volumes on axis atop the flat roof of a 200 meter long base. A dome hoses the Senate and an inverted uh, uh, dome or bowl uh, that houses the Chamber of Deputies. One ramp on the um, Esplanade side and twin office towers on the plaza side adjoin the base. They integrate uh, an asymmetrically balanced cruciform composition, slightly off axis regarding the sector with strong figural connotations. The domical volumes suggest waving scales, the twin towers a pivot, and their combination are the constructed balance that recalls the checks and balances characterizing a liberal democracy. Usual elements of a monumental architecture grace the three palace. The eye feasts on domes as well as peristyles, arcades, framed prospects, marbles, mirrors, pools, fountains, a grove of imperial trees, imperial palm trees. The peristyle at the base of the Congress show rather thick columns of neoclassical connotations, reiterating the Doric severity of the Ministry of Education's piloty in Rio, the inaugural uh, big project of Brazilian modern architecture from 36. Uh, the columns at the presidential palace, which we see here, and the uh, Supreme Court are shockingly slender and sculptural graceful Atlantis or Minoan of Minoan character. The three-story Planalto colossal columns define ground floor galleries with the virtual vaulting ceiling, re reinforcing the uh, reference to government palace facing a square like Palladio's Basilica in Vicenza. Uh, this is kind of uh, 
out of order, but uh, here you have in front of the palace, you have uh, uh, the rostrum at, uh, uh, at the background, and then two warriors uh, by Bruno Giorgi, who was an homage to the works that built Brasilia. The single story columns at uh, the uh, Supreme Court evoke Logier's primitive hut or uh, an Astraskan temple. The executive branch has bourgeois Republican overtones. At the judicial branch, law is seen to be rooted in nature and maybe religion. That's the Basilica in Vicenza. That's a combination of uh, the primitive, uh, Logier's primitive heart and an Etruscan temple that you can see in Villa Giulia in Rome. And here you have the, uh, the Supreme Court, okay? Um, the two works that build the city are celebrated by sculptors Bruno Giorgi to Varus, which I have already shown, and a larger than life Kubishek's head uh, by Jose Pedrosa stands out from the small Brasilia Historical Museum which faces the Twin Towers as the deconstructed balances beam. U.S. historian, uh, sorry. U.S. historian Norma Evanson gave the most perceptive account of the monumental sector near incompletion. For much of the year, the sky is filled with uh, scudding clouds bathing the site in shifting light and shadow. The floating formations of vapor often sustaining the illusion of greater substance than the man-made structures below. Appearing to rest but lightly on the tips of tapering supports, the building seems to have been placed by a magician, uh, by a magician's hand rather than by constructed by patient human labor, creating an apparition which strikes the vision with hallucinatory clarity. There is no emphatic and secure sense of possessing awareness of the ephemeral, a melancholy and sophisticated perception of how tenuous man's grasp of earth and how transient are, are his work. None of these needs, I think, much explanation. It is almost social realism gone modern. For William Holford, one of the jurors of the pilot plant competition, Brasilia is a city that the poor and the illiterate can see and understand. Some of the sensational effects are or were deeply moving even if on the verge of being cheap trills. One of them is the removal of, uh, one of them is the removal of, uh, um, one of them is the removal of intermediate supports in the front colonnades of the Planalto Palace. And it seems and is surreal from a structural point of view, yet, while concealing the means that underpin its apparent magic, it does not lack revelatory power. It signals the ceremonial entrance and exposes the glass box behind. And it contributes to the lightness that pervades Niemeyer's monumental architectures. The delicacy and internal simplicity create a kind of anti-monumental and very modern monumentality, as controversial as the emphasis of the plaza of the three power, as controversial as the emptiness of the plaza of the three powers. Critics of the former means the traditional gravitas, the solemn physiognomy of yesterday. Critics of the latter see as waste what others think is the space legitimately reserved for the rare manifestations of collective joy or anger, potestrally 
or presidential inauguration. Evanson noticed the dispute between that ceremonial square and the rough environment. Standing there, she says, one becomes fully aware of the expansiveness of the site and the enormity of the wilderness, which seems to be waiting without to engulf the city. For her, it emphasized the insubstantiality of the architecture, while passing clouds conjure an atmosphere of oniric unreality, as the previous quotation shows. And she points out that Niemeyer's palaces rise white, clear, and abrupt on the landscape as Greek temples do. Additions to the square were few and unobtrusive in the 1960s. An underground tea house later converted into a tourist information agency, the seated justice by Alfredo Ceschiati, we've already seen, and a dovecote shaped as a giant clothespin. The military regime that seized power in 1964 stuck to the city. Additions in the 1970s include this, uh, the widening of the Congress base by Niemeyer in 1970 which destroyed the transparency of the foyer and access to the three palaces from 1975 and a very clumsy, um, and a very clumsy must by Sergio Bernardes for flying the national flag in 1972, which destroyed the meaningful opposition between the plaza and the savanna. It was followed by Niemeyer's Pantheon, which you see to the right, uh, to celebrate the redemocratization of the country in 1985, also known as the copulating doves, and um, of which the less one speaks, the better. Vulnerability of high culture architecture is a fact, even uh, by the hands of some of their most gifted creators. Unfortunately, the Twin Towers do not mask the flagpole in views, do not mask the Pantheon in views from the West as they do with flag mast. Uh, the latest addition already in the 90s is the Spasso Lucio Costa, which shelters underground uh, a map of the city. And now you can see in all their glory all the annexes the uh, an access to the Planalto Palace, the an access to the Supreme Court, the uh, Pantheon, uh, and the flagpole, all you know, colonizing what was in Costa's uh, idea uh, supposed to stand empty. So here it's. Uh, recent takes of the space. And you can see there is an axial symmetry, but all the uh, paving and landscape, you know, uh, conspires again uh, and leaves that symmetry by uh, not following it. And this is a special circle which shows the pilot plan here and all the suburbs that have grown beside it. Okay, let's go to the Tiananmen Square. Uh, Tiananmen Square uh, was uh, dreamed in 49. It was inaugurated in 59. And the last meaningful addition was in 1977 when uh, the uh, Mao's mausoleum uh, was uh, inaugurated. You know? uh, Tiananmen Square was intended as the heart of a modern Beijing in the planning. The new Tiananmen Square uh, resulted from the concerted effort of many architects. Walls and gates of the T-shaped existing, this is a forbidden city, okay? And this, and this is the existing Tiananmen Square, okay? And this is how the wall area look at in 1949. Uh, walls and gates uh, uh, of the T-shaped exit square were demolished 
together with many buildings to endow the capital with an enlarged square that respected the ancient pedestrian north-south axis, the Imperial Way, uh, uh, but uh, together with, uh, okay, but uh, that respected the ancient pedestrian north-south axis, but was associated with a vehicular, a vehicular east-west axis, uh, which was called, not surprisingly, Shang'an Avenue. Running alongside the Imperial City Southern Walls and beyond, with Tiananmen Tower and Gate as its central point, Shang'an Avenue became the northern boundary of a rectangular, of a rectangular uh, area, a rectangular Okay. Esplanade, limited by the now freestanding Tiananmen Gate to the south and the Arrow Tower beyond, and streets to the east and west. The, this quadrupled Tiananmen Square was to sign on and celebrate the socialist development of the country to the transformation of the urban landscape, new construction and adaptive reuse, resignifying historical architecture, symbolize, uh, symbolized the country's great leap forward under the leadership of the Chinese Communist Party. Designed as a, a 38 meter high steel by Liang Xisheng, Lin uh, Win, and others, the design and construction of a monument to the uh, people's heroes was part of China's first five year plan and lasted from 1953 to 1958. It rose in this planet at the crossing of the imperial axis, of the imperial axis with that of two new buildings, two new buildings in the super blocks that were created facing the south side of Shangan Avenue and the east and west sides of this planet. Both were designed and built from 1958 to 1959 as part of the second five-year plan. Jumbo was the architect in chief for the Great Hall of the People, which you see here, uh, which um, in the Western suburb, while Jiang Kaiji was the architect in chief for the Museum of uh, uh, the Museum of, Revo of, of the Chinese Revolution and History in the Eastern Superblock. The museum was to showcase the vicissitudes and achievements of the national road to socialism. The Great Hall was to remind people of the unity of the nation, party, and government while accommodating an auditorium for 10,000 people a banqueting hall, a banqueting room for 5,000 and a host for each of the 34 Chinese provinces. It's a, a, a program that is very much alike to that of the palace of the Soviets, who was the object of the ill-fated competition for Le Corbusier in Moscow in 1937. Anyway, Chairman Mao did not think small Tiananmen Tower kept being used as a rostrum with a larger than life Mao portrait, Mao portrait um, hung on the wall below. Tellingly, neither the executive nor the judicial branches of, govern of, of government faced the square. So this you have the uh, 
present uh, situation of the Tiananmen Square. This is Mao's um, memorial, which was uh, built in uh, 76, 77. You have the Tian Gate and you have the Arrow Tower. And here we have Tiananmen, Tiananmen Tower and Gate. And then you have the whole of a supreme harmony and the distance, which is the highest uh, structure of the Forbidden City. Here you have the uh, museum, here you have the gate hall of the people, and here you have the, uh, uh, you, here you have the uh, museum of the revolution, of the Chinese revolution and the history. And just to give you an idea, the footprint of those two buildings is more or less 380 meters and 170. Uh, with a height of approximately 14 meters here and uh, 12 meters there. And uh, though the symmetry prevails, uh, it's uh, those buildings are not exactly the same uh, because the program is uh, much more substantial here. So you have the, the volume of the museum complex was uh, inflated with the uh, with the inclusion of courtyards in uh, the project. Uh, here you have the Mao's portrait and the Mao portrait was a dimension so that you could see it clearly from uh, the standpoint of the uh, steel, the monument to the people's heroes in the middle of the plaza. So you get the close range, this is, uh, uh, um, prepared for uh, for the uh, military parade, uh, and here you have the uh, monument uh, to the people of Heroes. Uh, the monument is taller than the tallest structure of the Imperial City, the Hall of the Supreme Harmony. So the monument uh, to the people of Heroes fe features eight bas relief bas reliefs on the base depicting eight major revolutionary episodes in the Chinese history from the uh, destruction of opium in the run up to the first opium war of 1839 to the Yangtze River crossing campaign of the civil war in 1949. So it's a 10 story high mix of obelisk and steel that evokes the Han dynasty gate towers called Che and is topped by a Tang Dynasty Wuduan style hip roof. The monument deliberately appropriate blocks and deflects the imperial way, asserting the primacy of the uh, old over, of the new over the old. Okay. Uh, the Great Hall and uh, the museum complex uh, have a similar footprint. I've already uh, talked about this. Uh, their Soviet style elevations display protruding central porticos and end wings flanking two intermediary receding sections. The uh, sorry. Okay. The porticos feature uh, colossal colonnades while the wings feature stripped down colossal pilasters. The museum's portico is flanked by pillars meant to evoke burning torches, while the great hall columns are meant to evoke uh, those at the hall of supreme harmony. Overhanging eaves in both palaces are covered in yellow glazed roof tiles with Chinese motifs in relief. And uh, one should remember here that the yellow was the color reserved for uh, imperial roofs, okay. Nevertheless, uh, despite the Chinese motifs, the elongated uh, and rather narrow base have Western rather than Chinese proportions. And uh, let me show you. Okay, this is uh, the uh, gate hall with the monument in front of it. This is a view of the great, two views of the great hall. 
And here you have the uh, museum complex. It has some airy colonnades in front of it. And this, you have the uh, Mao Zedong uh, Memorial. It was designed by a collective inclusive, including a consultant by Yang Tingbao, and which is ironically very much uh, uh, reminiscence, uh, reminiscent of the Lincoln Memorial, Memorial of 1922 in uh, Washington. So uh, axial symmetry is uh, obvious as is the Soviet style academic uh, grandiloquence. Massiveness uh, is uh, obvious as well. No technological sublime, sublime here, with the exception of the Great Hall's auditorium, uh, which isn't photographable. He, we, uh, the auditorium has no columns on view and the representation of a starry night for seating. The open corners and the vastness of the esplanade conspired against gravitas, although the eclectic historicism of the monument is impressive and trees along the borders provide some enclosure. And there is a mask too, but this is slender, much nicer than the one Brazilian. This is the gate, the uh, remains of the uh, Southern Gate. And this is the uh, Arrow Tower at the very Southern tip of the complex. So, uh, to conclude, uh, architecture and politics is a complicated equation. Both squares correlate with the development efforts of third world countries during the Cold War. The plaza of the three powers is born, um, is born in the wilderness under the sign of liberal democracy. Tiananmen of imperial and in part Republican lineage is reborn as the heart of a communist capital. Appropriation was a common strategy for the Chinese Communist Party in 1949, and the right-wing Brazilian military that overthrew the Liberal Democrats in 1964. Appropriation also suited the Chinese Communist Party when he decided to combine socialist politics and the capitalist economy in post-Mao China, and Brazilian politicians that succeeded the military. So the univocal correspondence between form and their context is a chimera. The comparison also prompts a reflection on the different meanings of the expression modern architecture and to distinguish between the use um, and makes us distinguish between the use of the word mourner in the sense of contemporary and mother in the sense of a formal system, a language. Both Tiananmen Square and the Plaza of the Three Powers have common goals pointing to a better future, but they try to accomplish that goal with different stylist weapons. Figurative historicist eclecticism is open in 1980s Beijing, where Tiananmen Square promotes uh, who, uh, uh, where uh, Tiananmen Square uh, is seen promoting continuity, stability, and mass. The Plaza of the Three Powers develops stressing change and movement. Lightness and transparency, the structural feet and the abstract plane, yet it is full of illusions to pass milestones so that abstraction is never pure. It is historically grounded modern architecture. Does it help to say that the square in Beijing is archit architecturally conservative and that the one in Brasilia is architecturally progressive, that the former is kitsch and the latter is authentic? I have my doubts. Although I do believe that Brasilia's Plaza of the Three Powers is more of an invenzione, an invention, 
the Beijing's heavenly peace, our translation for Tiananmen, the steady equality must be referred to the particular disciplinary culture they are inserted into. Thank you. Thank you so much, Carlos Eduardo. Um, we can leave the, the screen just to start us with some questions and comments uh, from the audience. Could you please uh, leave us the screen, Carlos? Okay, yeah. that's good. Okay, that's uh, quite nice to have uh, this uh, three, actually three uh, operations, interventions in the city. The first one with the with the central civic center of Guatemala City, and uh, Sonia put uh, the effort at the at the at the end to explain us uh, how the the. What can I say? The first floor was not really used by the people and communicating different buildings. And Carlos show us these huge open spaces uh, uh, from Brasilia and even from Tiananmen Plaza, uh, where at the end show us uh, two pictures with the, with the plazas full of people. We are kind of different. Uh, approach of the urban design uh, it's really nice also because there are uh, the, the 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 three interventions are are uh, uh, at the same time uh, it's it's when started the the civic center in guatemala uh, the idea yeah, when the architects came back from their abroad studies it, it was 1952, 1954, circa those years. So it's uh, very similar to what happened in, in the other part of the world. Right? Yes, it's, it's it's very interesting because we we are at the same at the same time with different approach. Um, Carlos said that at the end that uh, 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 Tiananmen, it's, uh, it's uh, architecturally conservative and Brasilia is an invention. Uh, what can you, can you relate uh, both uh, with, with, uh, with the civic center of Guatemala and what kind of idea, Sonia or Carlos? Well, um, if I may, actually, I think that there are a lot of coincidences in what, what we saw in all the examples showed this morning or this afternoon in Europe. And there's like, um, I'm sure that the similarities presented by Professor Comas are undeniable. And in the end, it was a trend that was that has been repeated in our countries in Latin America, however, and like our civic center and like Brasilia, uh, on this side of the world, it has been always like we added this Latin flavor with the cultural stuff, uh, you know, added and reinterpreted in the spaces. I think that um, maybe the most um, differences between uh, the examples shown is the use of the public space, actually, because as I, as I told you in my last uh, remarks, unfortunately, the, the, the public spaces in the civic center right now are used just for people to go through, not to stay. There's nothing that invites the pedestrian to actually enjoy the spaces. So, um, I could see in Carlos Eduardo's examples that there was this, um, there were people staying at the public spaces. And right now, I think, and we have discussed it with uh, the colleagues in the Comomo that what's needed is to conclude the civic center and to give all this um, infrastructure so that people can stay and use use it as a public as a public space, not as a like a walkthrough, because actually people just walk through and go to the different uh, institutions to to make some errands, and that's it. But they don't say. Uh, and the other side, I can see in um, Brasilia, there's a different kind of uh, uh, dynamics, actually. So I think that most of it, uh, the 
the human dynamics is, is the most different between the, the examples. Can I comment? Yes. Yeah. So I think that both in Brasilia and in Beijing, you have a much more cohesive design um, than in Guatemala. I, I was very pleased to uh, uh, get acquainted with the, the Guatemala example, which I did not know. Uh, but uh, uh, in Brasilia, of course, uh, the architects had cut to blush from uh, Kubitschek. So Costa and Neymar actually, you know, did uh, an excellent job together. You know, so there was a, a, a give and take between the initial urban design conceptions uh, of Costa and uh, Neymar's palaces. Uh, and uh, surprisingly, I think that uh, in China, even though uh, the three, the, all the projects were the, the product of a collective effort and uh, uh, a very um, um, a very intensive project of a, uh, a very intensive process of collaboration, I think that uh, in the end uh, uh, it was the. Uh, Chinese Communist Party, who uh, really, it was the client, let us say, who uh, was in control, that was in charge, you know, and uh, approved everything. So you, we do have, you know, also these uh, unifying, uh, formal, uh, um, formal uh, control, you know, of the uh, product. This being said, I think that, uh, there is a, a very uh, marked uh, difference between uh, what you suggest the civic center scale was in Guatemala and uh, the ones in uh, China and Brazil. You know? Because from the outset, emptiness was part of the program. So these are ceremonial squares. Those are not you know, to be used for your daily stroll. You can uh quarrel with that idea but in a way this was the program it was coherently followed so actually you do have there you know either i i i call them uh, i call those uh, two plazas stages for the citizenry so actually you know these is these spaces are for crowds and for special occasions for special occasions of anger or joy or protest in, uh, in the histories of both spaces. <laughs> that sort, that kind of events is not uncommon. And the last one was uh, the terrorist, you know, depredation of the buildings uh, uh, in Brasilia in uh, January 8 by the supporters of uh, ex President uh, uh, Bolsonaro. Okay, not to mention the old episode with the students at the Tiananmen Square. So this is one part of the story. The other part of the story is civic tourism, which is encoded in both spaces. So, <clears throat> I mean, it's a special kind of open space. You know, it's a particular case. Can you say it is wasteful? Maybe, you know, but uh, man doesn't leave by bread alone. Thank you, Carlos. Thank you, Sonia. I, I ask, I'm going to ask Sonia about Carlos Merida because the, the um, um, Carlos Merida collaborated also with Mario Pani at the at the um, um, Presidente Juarez uh, complex uh, housing complex uh, in in Mexico City, and he did also uh, in a, I think it was in a, in a, in a very similar in situ casting, uh, um, what can I say, construction uh, method uh, for, the, for the murals. Uh, <clears throat> how many murals did he at the, at the Civic Center? You are, you are, you are mute, uh, Sonia, sorry. <clears throat> okay, uh, if you can follow what what he was made, you can count uh, about five or six murals that he built. And uh, well, he was actually the leader of the artist group. So they all get got together with uh, architect Jorge Montes and they decide as a team which themes were about to be put in the in the different uh, 
in the rich in the different buildings. But uh, Carlos Merida has the most uh, murals applied in and Efraín Resinos, both of them were the artists that made more works in the Civic Center. Oh, nice. nice. Actually, I think that Carlos Merida has more work in Mexico because uh, you can you can tell uh, he has. I have this list. We were talking uh, about it with Luis Noel, and he has more than twenty murals in Mexico. So um, our the work here maybe it's not as many murals, but are very very important and they are very linked to our culture. So that gives more value to it. Thank you. Any comments or question? No. I also well, wanted to maybe that, that to make a comment of what, what Professor Coma said that in the Civic Center of Guatemala, the spaces were designed to recover the prominence of the pedestrian in the first place, and alluding to the evocation of being a representations of pre-Hispanic ceremonial spaces that was not achieved. And it's not achieved either. But if you go and, see, and make an analysis of the dynamics of the urban dynamics that happened in, in this center, well, unfortunately, um, people really don't use the spaces for the reason they're way designed. So um, we in the Comomo Guatemala are convinced that we have to promote to, to for that civic center to be finished. And then to take the analysis of the of the dynamics to see if it really worked or not. Yes. Uh, Claudio, you have a In, comment. Hello, Sonia, Carlos. If is, this is a question for Sonia, is a is is more or less that the, the thing that you are was saying. Uh, when with with your presentation, well, first I love the radicality of the civic center of Guatemala, um, and with that what you show it, I have the idea of that public space was more like a large open air museum, spaces made to observe the large art surface surfaces. Do you agree with that? Yeah, I do. Actually, if you you can go and make some history of uh, some um, scientific works of other colleagues, they called it um, urban museum. Actually, so it was supposed to be like that to people for people to learn about our culture. But if you see the different uh, expressions, there are some too abstract for people to understand. So that's another failure. That uh, I mean, if for example, we have done some. Uh, visits with uh, students and almost uh, you have to explain what's the storytelling in the in the high reliefs but um, yeah you can actually say that it's an urban museum it, it maybe it wasn't the, the original concept the conception but right now it's uh, it could work like that also so thank you Claudia, for your question you're right you're welcome thank you. so some more questions. Okay, to Carlos, um, what do you 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 make a, a few relation about the the different palaces? You know, because you you explain the palace related with the basilica in the case of of the of the Brazilian uh, square, and with this huge block with the with the Tiananmen. Uh, uh, plaza. What kind of, of um, idea you have about the, these two buildings in, at the Tiananmen Plaza? Uh, because one of the of the, the Planalto and the Supremo Tribunal were close, different. You know, one is is in in the large of the of the place, and the other is in front of the place with a small facade. And the other was explaining the whole facade. And in the case of Tiananmen, both are doing this idea to um, what can I say? To to give the the squares the consolidation with the with the Tiananmen uh, port uh, mm -hmm. and the and the Mao uh, um, um, portrait there. 
Okay, there is this um, saying by Julien Gadet, who was uh, the, um, the professor of the theory of architecture at the uh, School of Beaux-Arts in Paris in the end of uh, the 19th century. And uh, speaking about symmetry, uh, he uh, wrote that symmetry is, the, uh, is intelligent regularity. And uh, he implied that there's no, no reason to use symmetry when uh, the eye cannot you know, grasp the uh, symmetrical elements uh, 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 at once, okay? And this is somehow what happens, you know, there are in, uh, in, in, uh, in Beijing. Uh, actually, you, you, they are too far apart. You can't really, you know, capture uh, both policy in your field of vision. So you have to first look at one and then look to the other. So, so actually, you know, the, uh, I'm speaking uh, from, <laughs> Uh, aesthetic point of view, the tension, you know, doesn't really hold. And actually, you overlook uh, the fact that um, uh, the um, that the museum complex has to be uh, blown up in terms of scale in order to be able to uh, compete, you know, in order to match, you know, the uh, great hall of the, the, the people who uh, which has uh, a program, um, well, it's a, a very large program. So, so um, I don't know, I've been there, you know, uh, six months ago. And uh, yeah, it does feel more enclosed than, uh, than Brasilia. Yeah. But uh, somehow, uh, it's, uh, but then, you know, I might be biased, you know, it's, um, a less touching is less moving for me than Brasilia. I would make an exception for the obelisk. The obelisk is really something, uh, uh, something uh, a piece, you know, of architecture and sculpture, you know, archaeo sculpture, if you wish, that really holds uh, its uh, own against, you know, the uh, uh, remains uh, of the uh, the imperial remains and. Uh, and even Chairman Mao's uh, memorial, uh, it's uh, is much better related to uh, the uh, way uh, to the composition, the overall composition of the plaza than the two uh, lateral buildings. I don't know if I answered your question. Yes, 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 yes. Of course, yes, you did. Yeah. So. so okay. Okay, if there's no more questions or comments. Yeah, I have a little question for Carlos. Um, if you uh, could explain something more, it's about the same idea, but it's about the size of the square, of the height of the, the buildings, the, mm -hmm. the, of the two, the two places, please. Uh, the the large... Know, I... the, I'm so mad, uh, uh, one of the reasons I'm so mad uh, at uh, the uh, flagpole in Brasilia and uh, the later Pantheon by Claudio, um, the later Pantheon by Niemeyer in the savannah in front of the uh, Eastern edge of the plaza. Is that the first time I visited it, uh, first time I visited the city was in 1970 and um, it's a long story, but uh, at that point in time, Buenos Aires was my reference in terms of a modern capital. So I wasn't too keen, you know, on modern uh, city planning and modern urbanism. But uh, it was odd that uh, the moment I stepped uh, down on uh, the Plaza of the Three Powers, it was immediate, you know, I, I got it uh, at, at that point, you know, that this was not uh, uh, a daily thing, you know, this really was a space uh, for special occasions. And, uh, and the impact of this one meter high uh, retaining stone wall, you know, between the um, level of the esplanade and uh, the savanna, you know, was very, very strong, very strong uh, sensation. So, so uh, I don't know. And there are lots of things in, 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 in the plaza, in the, the Plaza of the Three Powers that uh, are uh, more casual 
than in uh, in Beijing. Even the location of the uh, even the location of the sculptures, you know, and uh, and those underground spaces, the uh, tea house, the former tea house, now the um, tourist information ages. It, it's kind of funny, you know, going down and then looking at the uh, uh, looking at the palace of the Planalto this way, you know, like he, if you were in uh, uh, um, in. Um, I don't know the word in English, you know, if you were in a in a bunker, you know, so and so forth. So in, in, in a way, Beijing, uh, you know, uh, I think that uh, the monument and, uh, and uh, the remains, the imperial remains are really uh, magnificent, you know, but uh, it doesn't struck me, you know, it, it didn't strike me as, uh, as uh, as interesting as as emotionally uh, fulfilling as in Brazil, but then you know. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much, uh, Carlos and Sonia. Uh, it was wonderful to have you here and to uh, have an, an excellent explanation about the, the Civic Center in, in Ciudad de Guatemala and the Brasilia uh, Three Squares Plaza, uh, so Three Powers Square, sorry. Uh, uh, and thank you so much for being part of these pre-events of the 18 International Docomomo Conference and the Student Workshop. Uh, we hope uh, you can um, uh, be interested. Some people to to continue this uh, this uh, works of of Docomomo International and, and, and in the, in the whole world. Thank you so much. Uh, see you. Oh. Okay. Thank you. Ah, Cara, Sophie. Thank you, Sophie. There's a comment here. Thank you to the presenters and the organizers for today's interesting pre-event. And uh, uh, this is Sophie. Thank you, Sophie. Uh, and uh, Trilse remind us uh, that all pre-events are recorded on YouTube channel Centro Patrimonio for uh, uh, going again and, and see uh, the pre-events. And all the pre-events are in the web page of the Docomomo conference. Thank you so much. And thank you, Horacio. Thank you. So thank you, Horacio. Thank you, Carlos. And it was very nice to see you. Hopefully, we see very nice each other in person next year. Okay. Take care. Take care, everybody. Bye bye. Thank you bye. so much. Bye. bye.